This is one of the biggest updates I've ever witnessed in a game. No joke. It's like on par with Minecraft's Cave and Cliffs update or GRT Dashes 2.2. I've never seen so much content packed into one update. Hence why this video is split into several chapters for you to skip to. Though I do highly advise you to watch all the way through so you can learn a lot about the update. And of course, spoilers ahead. The secret level for layer 7 can be accessed by going right instead of left with the first door in 7-3. To get through the door, you can't use Firestarter, I've already tried this. But you need a street cleaner. And you can find street cleaners after the second tree. Not including the first one, the first one that's like the introductory one. After the second tree, there's stairs. I'll show clips of this. There's stairs. When you go down, you'll find street cleaners. You lead them back to where the beginning is and you take them to the door. You allow it to burn the door and you can go through. Now, 7S in and of itself is kind of a cleaning simulator. You, you kill enemies, like regular levels, and then you need to clean up. When, when you put in the final blue skull and you go through the door, it tells you that you cannot leave until you clean everything. You get a water sprayer and a vacuum and everything. You need to clean out the limbs and you need to spray the blood. It's kind of annoying, but just go through with it. Now, there are two... Well, there's one secret. Yeah, kind of two. Well, I'll show a clip of this. I can't really describe it with the words. But there's a green book to the right of the top area, which you can pull back with the vacuum. And you can go through, like, the little swiveling door, and you'll find a conductor thing that you see in other le levels, like Limbo and Lust. So you activate that with the electric rail cannon, you go out, and you see floating drones. Now you need to capture these floating drones, and then the door that's in that room with the green book, it's gonna unlock. You're gonna take the red skull, you're gonna go up, and you see the waterfall, you're gonna go through, it's a really long path, but just bear with it. At the end, you'll find the pedestal for the Red Skull. Place it on there, and you're going to find the secret. I'm not going to show it, because spoilers kind of... Well, I'm spoiling everything, but I won't spoil the secret. So, you have the drone sting, which is kind of like a parody of Luigi's Mansion, it seems. And then the secret, the other secret, it's not really a parody of anything. It's just, it's just there. And there, it, there's no lore implications. It doesn't seem like there could be lore implications. It's really basic. It's like nothing really special. But you can go ahead and look into it. That's all the information I've really gathered from it. And if there's any more details, I'll provide it in the description or comments. Now I'm going to talk about Brutal. Some of the main changes are that enemies are now obviously faster with movement, attacks, and projectile attacks. Enemies bleed less therefore you heal less from them filth can jump strays are more accurate soldiers can now roll and they occasionally perform a melee attack after they roll at you mori spread their shots more and they have more projectiles in total drones are extremely fast i've noticed this in limbo they're extremely fast cerebri dash twice and they create two shockwaves when they stomp mind flayers cannot get insta killed when when you like over pump them or shoot a rocket at them before they perform their uh, orb attack they do not deflect back at them and they do not kill them gutter men become enraged when you break their shield and they become unparryable after that gutter tanks are no longer parryable when they trip v2 is in general faster with its attacks and movements and now gabriel can use the spear attack in any direction rather than only from above you these are some general changes in the difficulty and there's a lot more i'll link the wikipedia in the description so you can read it for yourself but that's mainly it there's some there's some other changes for other enemies for the new red variants we have three or you could say four new variants. The first one being the fire starter, a rocket launcher that shoots gasoline as an old fire that could be lit up with core ejects or the rockets themselves. It does a lot of damage to enemies, and we found out that gasoline keeps your momentum when you spray it under you as you're sliding, which is really neat. Then we have the jump start, the red variation of the nail gun or saw blade launcher. It releases a cord that attaches to enemies that sends electricity to the enemy, eventually shocking them. 
Hitting other enemies with the saws or nails will also shock them with electricity. The cord itself detaches when you get too far. It will tell you in the HUD of the weapon itself, and it will tell you if it's out of reach or not. And finally, we have the sawed on shotgun, which quite literally shoots a saw. You could keep it active by punching it and it will continue to pierce it through enemies. Or you could hold the alt fire and use it as a kind of melee weapon, dealing a lot of damage and killing most fodder type enemies quickly. The new alternate weapon can be found in 7-2 after you activate all three pillars or pedestals. You'll find it in the building to the left of where the two gutter men spawn and the tram gets blocked. At the top of the building, there's a hole that leads you to where the alternate weapon is. You go through the door and go down to find the weapon. We'll talk about the machine that's holding the weapon later. So the new weapon is the alternate shotgun, but how does it work? It functions kind of like a piston, it, it does a push sort of movement as its primary fire, and the alt fire varies among the variations of it. If you hadn't noticed, the valve on the left of the weapon charges up when you move. This weapon is powered by velocity. The faster you move, the more charged up it will be. When you shoot the weapon with max velocity, it will recharge it by what seems letting out air and allowing it to refill. I'm not entirely sure this is still really new and we don't have that much information. The core eject variation of this weapon shoots a core eject close up to you and you can use a primary fire to launch it at enemies. Now, the pump charge variation loads up like the regular pump charge and explodes when fully pumped. It does a lot of damage when it's in direct contact with full velocity. It did like 40% of V2's health for me. It was insane. Now finally, the sawed on variation. It acts exactly like the normal one and I haven't noticed changes when you're at max velocity. But you can keep the saw active with the piston if you're consistent enough with it. Okay. What was the machine that had the weapon? Well, first of all, you'll notice the flag on it that says, well, I'm not going to pronounce that because I'm going to butcher it, but it translates in English to warrior of the people. Now it's speculated that this was a machine created after the gutter tanks and that it was made to defeat the gutter tanks and the gutter men. The weapon itself that you get from the machine can blast away gutter men shields and can blast away rockets from gutter tanks. It also seems that the machine itself had spring legs to gain velocity and deal more damage, as we see with the weapon. Now, it seems that this machine was only one, like one of its kind. There was no other produced ones because it ultimately failed, as you can see. We don't know how it failed, what killed it, but it eventually met its demise in 7-2. That's most of the lore that we can find. There could be some other things that other people have found, and if there is updates on this thing, I'll leave it in the comments or in the description, and I'll keep you guys updated. Thank you so much for watching. Most of the information in this video is still new, and if there's any updates to any of the topics covered in the video, I'll mention it in the comments or in the description. This update is so packed with content, it took me a solid 5 hours to discover everything new, and I fully advise you to play through it if you haven't already. That's everything for today. I hope you all enjoyed the video and I hope you enjoyed the update if you haven't played it already. Goodbye.